Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh how amazing you'll be. Well, hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome, uh, welcome back. Hey, I, I haven't been streaming so far this year. It's only the uh, it's only the third, but um, been a little bit slack. So uh, welcome, Lachlan, uh, Travidal as well, Ionix Junior. How you doing? So uh, just playing around with a, a funny little uh, a funny little thing called stream avatars. So uh, each of you have this little avatar down here, and. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, can we control them? Yeah, I think you can. I think if you go like uh, exclamation left, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Yes, you do have a fruit basket on your head, Travidale. Um, But I get a little bit more control. See, I can do this. And then you've got to run for your life. <laughs> anyway, just playing around with stuff. Beautiful. So how's everyone's uh, how's everyone's New Year's? I, I was in bed by 9.30 at night. Happy New Year, Matt Goldman. Welcome. <laughs> People playing around with the avatars. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I had a really quiet New Year's. Um, but, you know, back on board now. So uh, I'll start streaming again. Party mode from Lachlan. Let's see if I can do this. Mass dance. There we go. Anyway, just thought it'd be a little bit of fun just to uh, throw those on there for a while. See how distracting they are. Probably really super distracting. Not as distracting as that music. All right, let's have a look at what we're going to do today. Uh, so the plan was to continue uh, at Iceland Moss project so uh this one's been going on for a while uh, but the plan is to uh is to sort of finish some of this off and what i kind of want to focus on today um is the shopping cart side of things so i think i've got this running somewhere all right let's have a look at what we have here so we've got uh, we've got the basic application uh, running here. We can add things to the shopping cart by uh, pressing our little button here, and that will uh, put them in. We can go and we can have a look at the shopping cart. Um, and in here, we get the basic layout going. What we don't have in here, what we don't have in here, is we don't have the totals. And we also don't have the freight as well. So I thought I might just tackle that uh, today. All right. Um, how's that sound? All good? Now, just for reference, let's have a little bit of a look at the video of the original one. And let's see what it does. And let's have a look at the screen design. So once we uh, pop one of these up, it's actually got the, there we go. So that's our, uh, our order detail screen. Uh, and what we can see, it's got the total down the bottom. It's got uh, a delivery in here as well. Actually, it might be a little bit easier to see if I bring up this design here. I don't know why my butt's on fire. Oh, well. Uh, so uh, what we have is we've got our shopping cart. So Lachlan says, have I gotten in trouble with the Drivel designers for the designs you use? I haven't. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. I feel like I should. What do you think? What do you think, Lachlan? Probably should. 
I always give them credit. I always make sure that, uh, that I give them lots of credit, but um, I don't really contact them and say, hey, I've just uh, implemented your Drupal design. Hey, TR Dopey, how are you doing? <laughs> All right, cool. So let's have a look at this shopping cart, hey? Fine, I'm good, I'm good. I'm actually a little bit, uh, bit slow entering into the new year, I gotta tell you. But uh, yeah, you know, basically there. So the dribble terms of content, uh, terms and conditions make it quite clear that you're only allowed to contact them on dribble to offer them a job. But if they were your designs, you'd love to watch the stream. Yeah, maybe I should. I mean, I'll, I'll do it the next one that I, um, the next one that I do, I'll contact them. Yeah, and uh, and. You know, maybe they can give some feedback as well, because sometimes you do these designs and you're not quite sure what they had in mind for it. So um, that might be a good option. Uh, anything new on Zam recently, TR Dopey? Um, well, lots of things. Um, there's always lots of things happening, but uh, not too much. I think uh, the, the hot code reload is, uh, is sort of in preview and, and looking good. Um... I spent all yesterday like rebuilding machines and things like that. So that was, uh, that kind of sucked. But uh, apart from that, no, I don't know, I don't know. New versions of Xamarin Forms every week. <laughs> Xamarin Shell. You know, I don't do a lot of Shell, I gotta say. Um, but I am gonna be developing an application uh, soon on stream. Um, and with that, we may use Shell. All right, um, let's have a look at what we've got here. So one option that we want to do here is we want to add this delivery charge in, all right? So you can see in the in the design, it has a delivery charge. Um, now interesting, this has got, I'd have to fix a few things here with this design. Like why don't we just quickly do that? Let's see what we have here. Let me see if I can organize my screens here. I, I hate having such small amounts of screen real estate. All right, let's have a look at the um, at our page here. Yeah, where are we going to find that? Here we go. Let's have a look at a shopping cart popover. Let's have a look at what this has set here. Uh, so we've got a grid. Yeah, we've got an image button. We've got a stack layout. We've got a box view. We've got a collection view. Here we go. And then we've got some columns here. So we've got 64 for the first one. Let's give that a little bit of shadow in here. See if that looks nicer. No, it doesn't really look nicer. A little bit more space. That should be good. Let's have a look at that design. Do, do, do. And let's not look at it there. Let's look at it here. I think we want a, a darker font there. Apart from that, it's not too bad. Shopping cart item label. Wow. Okay, looks like I've... I don't even know what that does. Wow. 
Wow, that's interesting. I want to go to the definition. It's not taking me the definition for the resource. It's taking me to the definition for, for a string. Cool. All right. Well, let's just find that puppy. So we've got a body font medium. Okay, so that's Montserrat medium. Doesn't look very medium, does it? I'm just going to change this for a second. Let's just see whether that's the right one. Yeah, that's definitely it. Hey, there's a question. Um, Leanne T. Walker, where is there a resource and where do I recommend to learn Skier Sharp? Um, look, probably, probably the best place to learn Skier Sharp, I reckon, would be if you go to the docks. Okay, so there's the Skier Sharp docs, uh, which are really cool. I'll post a link out to those in the, in the chat window. These are really cool. Um, and particularly, right, it actually goes through heaps and heaps of stuff. It's got heaps of really good stuff. But what's particularly good to have a look at is the examples. So there's a, there's a nice uh, video here as well this maybe this one here could well be this one i think okay so this is a really cool demo Today we're gonna call hey dragon Mr. Kim, Phil, Potson, oh, how amazing thanks so much for the subscribe <laughs> wowee <laughs> nice one uh so that's um that's probably a pretty good uh pretty good resource i reckon um so who was that that uh, asked that let me just go and have a look leanne luen maybe um have, have, a, have a look at that that's that's that um that actually has heaps and heaps and heaps of really really good um good code in here Right, so all sorts of stuff about bitmaps and curves and paths, all sorts of really great stuff inside of there. So, um, so definitely go and check that out. <laughs> Looks like Dragon gifted a uh, emote. Nice one, Dragon. All right. Um, so what was I doing here? I was having a look at. I was having a look at the design here and what we've got kind of thinking to myself that feels a little bit not dark enough anyway let's not let's not really deal with that because i don't have all the time in the world today so what i want to do instead is i want to uh, basically get the freight stuff in here okay and the total so at least it's showing the right information in here when we uh when we go and do that Let's check that out. Yep, so our basket's working. So if I say add green life and sky blue in there, we've got our two items. Beautiful. All right. We probably want to put something in there as well when we haven't got anything. All right. Uh, cool. So what we want to do then is we want to have another item that we have give me your opinions on this but if we have a look at the design we have 
like a delivery item. Okay. And so the delivery item here is kind of, it's, it's also contributing to the total cost here. And it's probably best off as an actual item in the shopping cart, right? Because we probably, it probably wants to be in this sort of scrollable section here, right? Like I'm guessing that this section scrolls up and down. Okay. And this bit down here is static. That's the way we've done the design so far. So we need a total, we need a bit of business logic in here as well. Free distribution for more than $80, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let me see if this total's working actually. Oh, it looks like we have to get this totals working as well. So much stuff to do in this shopping cart. All right. So let's uh, let's see what we have. Let's see because it's been like a month since I looked at this. Let's have a look at our view map, view model. So we've got a shopping cart item, which is an observable object. It has a product in here. It's got a count of items, and it's got a total which is the price times the count. There we are, sounds reasonable. We've got a shopping cart view model. The shopping cart view model is what is sitting behind that page. And in that we have a list of shopping cart items. We've got a collection there. We've got a method to go and find an item, increment the quantity. Okay, beautiful. And that increment quantity basically says, if we can go and find the item already in the shopping cart, then let's go and increment the amount. Uh, otherwise, we'll get the shopping cart. Uh, otherwise, we'll add a shopping cart item and set its count to one. Beautiful. All right. So first of all, what are we actually binding on this page here? So we're binding the price. So that's possibly not correct, right? Because we probably want to bind the total. So let's try that. Let's try binding. Okay, total, that didn't work. Let's have a look at what our total is. Total property not found on Product view model. Ooh. Hey, R2. How you doing? How's your New Year's? It's R2, so you can't argue with him. Happy New Year indeed. I'm, uh, I'm just trying to remember how any of this worked. Because it's been so long. But um, yeah, cool. Welcome, uh, welcome to the new year, Artu. Okay, so we've got shopping cart items. So let's have a look at a shopping cart view model. We have items, which is shopping cart item. Let's have a look at our page. Uh, 
I think we just want to get rid of that. We don't want the product name. We just want the total. There we go. All right, so that fixes it, right? So now we have 36. So if I come back out of here and I say, let's order two of those and one of these. I don't know what this little square is. I don't know if we work that out. So um, we got two. Oh, look, we don't have enough space here. All right, for a starter, let's pull that down a little bit in size. Let's have a look at what we're doing in terms of these columns. So we got 64s. All right. Anyway, our totals are working there. Okay. Now our total down the bottom isn't working. So let's um, let's try and get that total down the bottom working. Okay. So we don't even have a totals um, in here. Right, so we probably want that, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead. Um, let's run this up. Let's. Um, we should better get this in the shopping cart total. I think we had a shopping cart total. Yeah, so Dragon, I, I did change a screen. Um, I'm actually into a, a, a little bit of uh, perhaps some interesting stuff. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this at the moment. Um, I just want to change it up a little bit from where it was. So I had the Zamagon. Um, <laughs> so I thought I'd change that after a while. And then uh, I actually like to try some more dynamic scenes. I do have a green screen. Part of the reason I have a green screen is because I'm moving house. And so behind me is like a total mess. <laughs> and you don't have to see that. Nobody has to see that. All right, let's have a look at what we have um, in our design. What's our total look like? Okay, totals down here. Beautiful. Hey, Capital Twitch. Happy New Year from sunny Brisbane. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Yeah. Travidale showing your, um, your avatar. Which one are you? Are you the guy with the mushroom on your head? Come up here. Just remember, um, I can put you in timeout, right? So I can grab you and... Uh... <laughs> I hear. So this is a, this is a little thing called, uh, called stream avatars. I thought I'd just put it on the bottom, see if anyone uses it. So I can do things like I can drop like little stars here. I can play mini games. I don't know, it's a bit distracting. So uh, you can basically collect these points and things like that. Probably pretty distracting. So if you want, you can come into, uh... there we are, dragon. You win points, and then we can redeem points for something. <laughs> I don't know what. 
Anyway, a little bit of silly fun. <laughs> Win game. Anyway, okay, what are we doing? We're doing... We're, <laughs> I got distracted. So, what do we want to do? We want to have a look at our shopping basket, right? And uh, in our shopping basket, you can also customize your, uh, your character as well. There should be a panel in the Twitch settings where you can... Uh, on my Twitch page down below, I think you can go and you can set up like all different hats and customize them however you want. Okay, so this is what we want, right? We've got this layout here. I think we're gonna go create ourselves a grid here. And create ourselves a couple of columns. So maybe a column here and a column here. What do you think? Something like that. And then we'll put that detail in there. Now this one here, we've got this, uh, they've got this and dollar symbol as well so we're probably going to do that as a you know as we've done in some of the other parts we'll do it as like a a horizontal stack layout and then we'll adjust the size of that so let's see if we can get that working first of all um so i'll put this here so hopefully you can see it as we do it so we've got our total here Let's add a few columns in. So this first one will just say it's auto sized. Second column, we'll say it's star sized. Okay. And then we'll add the third column in, which Now, what we do want, let's have a look. Which we probably only need two columns here. So that one there has uh, the total. And then we'll also have another one which has our text, which is our, um, our actual shopping cart total amount. So let's have a look. Let's add. 99 here for the moment. Grid dot row equals also grid dot column. That's one. We'll set it style. like that can't spell that's my problem I'll just go and do this yeah and then we can go and we can uh, change it a little bit Locking got a new hat. Mario. Hey, you're Mario. <laughs> you got your dinner. You got a knife and fork out, Lachlan. Love it. Okay, so let's let's put a put a stack layout. The end uh, orientation horizontal. Because what we're going to want to do is we're going to put this label there. So this will be in grid column one. And 
and pretty much like what we've done. Where else did we see that? Maybe in our product details page. Okay, so I think we want this uh, vertically centered. Put this vertically centered as well. size 30 or so. Okay, let's add a few things into this shopping cart. All right. And we want our total. Now, I think we want our total to... in from the side so the same amount as what we have here so that would be 30 so it would mean zero to the left 20 to the top 50 to the right zero to the bottom oh, oh. okay that looks about right Cool. Now the total clearly isn't the total. So where are we going to get the total from? We're going to get this from our view model. So we've got a shopping cart view model. So we probably want to have a total on there, right? Let's add a total in. Okay, so we'll just add a property in. Um, so add a prop in here. Um, we'll make it a decimal. Decimals are good for numbers, right? Total. Beautiful. Convert it to a full property because when we set the total, we want to raise the property changed. Okay, so we'll say uh, referring to a total. The value is going to be the value. Sounds about right. So now what we need to do is we need to say what well, our total is going to be um, have to kind of have to be updated, right? So when we add something into our shopping cart, we want to calculate our total.
Let's not call that calculate total. Let's call it update total. I think I asked this last time. Did anyone, anyone implemented a shopping cart? So I guess what we want to do here is we want to loop through all the items and well, I suppose we're just going to uh, still just fake ones for side projects, Dragon. Yeah. Also. I don't know if when you do the jump, you've got to uh, take into account lag. <laughs> All right, so let's um, let's just do this. Let's just uh, basically say, okay, well, let's go for each item in our shopping. That collection called items. Um, and then we'll just say our total. Now, because we're going to have to do some uh, business logic in here as well, in terms of freight charges, also. So let's um, let's do that in a moment. As for us, am I struggling with something? I'm just struggling getting into the new year more than anything. But no, not so much. Just, just working on the code side of things. Just uh, basically going through all of my items here and just saying my calculated total. Uh, increment that by item dot total. Something like that, right? So we'll just do that for a start. And then we should be able to say our total equals calculated total. I mean, SS blue. <laughs> you can change your color. Oops, sorry. Can update them. All right, so we, we set our total here. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do, right? So yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Add it to the total. Once we add something in here, let's go calculate total. Uh, wait on. What do we call it? Update total. Okay, so once we add something, we update the total which is the total in a shopping cart view model, which should mean that if we bind our page to that, we should get that value. We had one of those, we had one of those. Okay, so let's do this as a binding to our shopping cart dot total. Doesn't look right. Get that out of the way here. Do, do, do. Okay. 
Let's have a look at what's their binding context for this. Product display popover. Should be the should be the main view model, right? Where's their collection view? <laughs> you know why? I'm on the wrong page, Dr. Jones. And you fail. All right. And now we wait for Visual Studio to come back. Here we go. Shopping cart pop over. There we go. That's what we want. So we want to bind this to our shopping cart dot total. There we go. And now we have a total. All right, so we've got 12 and 17. If I remove an item, oh, it doesn't do anything. Okay, cool. So now let's deal with our shopping cart, removing an item out of there. Okay, so we've got an increment order uh, method. We've got an update total. Maybe what we also need is we need a remove item as well. And we're gonna remove a shopping cart item. And we're basically just gonna go items, remove the item. And then we're gonna update our total. Now the question is, where is, where is this being called from? So this is, uh, so Dragon implemented your first custom control the other day. It's a segmented control. Beautiful. Are you putting it out on um, open source? Or out in GitHub? Or is it just a private thing for the moment? Okay, so this is our X. This is where we do our delete. The moment this is going to a main view model, it's calling remove item command. Let's go and have a look at that. Remove item command. Calls remove item. Uh, so instead of doing that, let's, instead of just directly deleting it from the collection, instead let's go shopping cart dot remove item i. Here we are. And I think that'll do it now. So Dragon, you're going to do it once it's tested more. It's driven by the segmented options instead of the parent control like most other segmented controls. Okay, allows you to disable or enable each style option at an individual level. Beautiful. That sounds cool. All right, let's have a look. Let's add a couple of three sky blues and a sun yellow. 53, six, yep, looks about right. Let's remove the yellow sun. Yay, and we get 36, beautiful. It's working. And then we get zero. All right, cool. 12. All right, so now, 
Um, we got the basics of that working. We had a few more sky blues in. Eight of them gives us 96. Beautiful. A couple of yellow suns and a red. What is this? Okay, it gives us 151. Beautiful. Something definitely wrong with the spacing of all of this. Let me go and have a look at that first of all. We've got an image, then we've got the number of items. Do we have some padding in here? I'm going to margin. Column spacing of zero. Okay, we've got a bit of column spacing. Oh, God, I hate column spacing. Okay, cool. Oh, look, M Fractors said, hey, you know what? Be cool. Simplify that. That's nice, M Fractor. Well done. All right, that's looking a little bit nicer. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got our, our total there. Now, what we also need to do is we need to add in this freight. All right, so the delivery here. So there's a, some business rules on this one. So it's basically saying you get free distribution for more than 80. Otherwise, it's going to have a delivery. So here's the question. If you have more than 80, should it show this with zero? It probably should. You would? All right. So now comes the next question is these a shopping cart items in our world, right? These ones here. This should be a shopping cart item as well, but it's not a product, or at least it's an order added product. Now, if I have a look at my view model for this puppy, I got shopping cart items inside of here. So, um, I'm thinking of like creating another object in here, which is just a cart item. So basically adding an interface and then changing this to be able to have that because you might have coupon supplied, you might have freight. So there's other things that could be in your shopping cart apart from the actual products themselves. That's my theory here. All right, so why don't I do this. Why don't I go and create myself a cart item and let's create myself a little interface here. Right, because the problem is if I add things that aren't products, you know, my collection itself is, is typed to No, not there. It's a shopping cart item. So Dragon, yeah, you do an eye shopping cart item. Yep, cool. So I'll, I'll call it iCart item. Beautiful. And actually, 
doesn't have to have anything in here. Right? It's it's like purely just to say, hey, this is a cart item. And then my shopping cart item would be an I cart item. All right? And then my shopping cart view model instead would have an I cart item inside of there. This is an observable collection of iCard items. All right. So now my find item gets a little bit more complex because if I'm finding a product, I would need to do this, right? I'd say if item, so basically only if it's a shopping cart item. So I basically say if our item is a shopping cart item, Then I basically want to cast this to a at work. Dragon says with C-Sharp 8, your interfaces can have default implementations. Oh, so it can have code in it as well. So it's more like a, um, more like a protocol in, in um, Objective-C then. All right. Let's just do this for a moment. Just trying to think of the best way of doing this. Um, probably just going to be something like that, right? Just sort of saying, if it's a shopping cart. Suggestion, if item is shopping cart. So let's have a look. If item is shopping cart item. Yep. And then you're saying create a variable for that. Yeah. So basically just saying like my product item. Oh, are you saying you can, you can, cast it up here. Oh. So what I can I can do foo. Wow, Travidale. Oh my god. Turns out I suck at C sharp. That's awesome. All right, cool. I'm I'm all right. I'm not going to call it foo. I, I don't suck that much. Let's call it product item, right? And then what are we doing here? If the item's a product item, then calculated total. Oh man, Travidale, that's awesome. Things I learnt today. Oh wow, dragon. Hang on. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> That's cool. So that was 3D printed. One thing I always wondered about 3D printing, right? Because it kind of ends up with like rough bits as it does the layers. Do people normally file them or sand them? That's normally the way it rolls. Do some cleanup. Dragon, you need to um, get your friend to start a store. All right, so I can do this now, right? Product item. Look at this. Look how much cleaner this is. Now I can return product item. Oh my God. Yeah, Dragon says there's also support structures you need to deal with. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, that's so much better. Okay, so now we've got a card item. So I want to just check everything still works before I go and add in some totals. Uh, sorry, add in freight. Seems to still work. Beautiful. 24, 17, 41. Beautiful. Great. So now what we can do is we can add a new kind of card item. Which is going to be uh, basically a freight item. And it's going to be an iCard item as well. Cool. Now, this is going to have a freight charge associated with it, right? So we'll have um, a property. Freight charge. getter which says return the freight cart we have a setter which is just going to raise the property changed So now I think uh, when we update our totals, we need to work out this freight item. Well, actually, I think what we need to do first of all is we need to add in a freight item into our shopping cart. So we'll always have a freight item in there. It's just the question is, what value does it have? So if we go to our main view model, we create a shopping cart view model. We have products in here. Why don't we go shopping cart dot items dot add a new freight item. Alrighty. And then we'll come into our shopping cart view model. And we'll 
let's say when we update the totals want to calculate the freight costs. Yeah, so I'm going to use a data template selector. I'd say so, right? Because this is, uh, if you have a look at this, this is substantially different. Like, A, you can't remove it. B, it has a different layout here. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the data template selector uh, would be a good option. Hey, Glenn. So, um, let's do this. Let's do something like. Let's have a look at that design for a second. Free distribution to more than, for more than 80. All right. So we have a delivery item. We'll add that into a cart. Um, we're then going to say free distribution for more than 80. Hey, 100 biddies. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Lachlan. She had 100 bits. Everyone's dancing. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um... So I'm assuming it's just going to basically say that and it's going to just have either like, you know, a value of say 15. We'll say either 15 or it's going to be zero for more than 80. So when we calculate our total, let's do this. We need to have our calculated total to be equal to that. And then we need to say if our... Our calculated total is greater than 80. Sorry, it's maybe less than 80. Then... Add the freight cost if it's, if it's less than 80. Right, so we'll say um, something like that. Now we probably also want to add in. Um, so that should give us the right amount anyway. We should be able to see those values. See whether that calculation works. Then what we can do is we can do the data template selector for it. So if I... <laughs> Look, our freight item is in there. Okay, but that's all right. Because we want our freight item in there. We just want it to say zero. We also don't want to be able to remove it. So we've got a value of 15. So that's correct. So if I was to add $80 worth. $84. It doesn't add freight. Beautiful. But my visual error is wrong. All right. What's the question? Dragon. Um, is there a reason you did that there instead of creating a method that returned the freight cost on the freight item? Well, actually, that's a that's a good point, actually. Because theoretically, the freight 
could be different, couldn't it? Based on where you are, right? That's how freight works. So yeah, why don't we do that? Um, so we could do this, right? We could do something like this. Can we do this? Get freight item. Which is basically like this one here. I'll just do it with a four each to start with. That's right, just hang on for one second. I'll be back shortly.
my goodness that was weird that was weird um <laughs> i just had i just had somebody uh because we're we're, lent, we're leasing this house out i'm about to move and so somebody was in like measuring the room anyway i'm back so lachlan desk looks a little wobbly could be well, it's, all, it's all about to get a new setup in uh, in in not so long so uh, we'll see how it goes anyway sorry about that let's get back to it what on earth was i doing i was getting a freight item uh if it's a freight item then return an item all uh, right this doesn't want to return a decimal this wants to return a freight item doesn't it happy coding no worries trevor Dale. thanks for the tip by the way that was awesome <laughs> See you next time. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Otherwise, let's return. Oh. Right. Beautiful. All right. Um, so, what are we saying? We're saying if we get a freight item, um, we want to say um, here, let's... Why don't we just go and find the freight item? So we could do this, right? We could do it with our update totals. We could get our calculated totals. Calculate all of those. And then we could say... Find our freight item. Freight item. The question is, do we even have to do that? Add the freight charge. Let's just do that. And we'll add the freight charge. Cool. Now, just for the sake of this, when I create this thing here, let's give this a freight charge. 15. Cool. Okay, so that should probably work. Um, the other thing I would say though, is that when we go and add something into the collection, add an item in, we probably want to add that into element zero, basically our, our, first, um, our first item. What do you think? So Dragon says, what I mean is putting the function on the freight item itself, past the current total as a parameter, then the freight item's in control of what its cost is. Yep, might not be the right way, but it's what I would do. All right, so let's have a look. Because I'm not really thinking at the moment. Um, so you're saying, basically get the calculated toast, get our freight item, and then calculate the freight based on the calculated total. Yeah. All right, we can do that. Probably makes a lot of sense. So maybe we have like a public. So 
So what should we have in here, you reckon? Should we have a should we have a method to calculate the total? A bit like a service. So if the order total is greater than 80, then our freight charge is equal to zero. Otherwise, our freight charge is equal to 15, right? Or calculated based on an address or something like that so let's just do that let's just say free card is charges 15 beautiful all right um so now what we want to do is when we update the totals we probably want to do this right we probably want to do something like find our freight item should just be a decimal well the thing though is that I want this to be updated because that's going to appear in our cell. That's what's going to appear here, I assume. That's why I'm doing it that way. Maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll try. Like I said, super casual stream today. Just playing with code. Uh, so here, let's just do this. Let's go get a freight item. Yeah, so it just calculates it. So we can get rid of this code here. Don't need any of that. Blah, blah, blah. So then this is the calculated total plus the freight. Freight charge. Mm. Feels a bit messy, but anyway. items we update that all right well let's do this how about we uh how about we visualize this so we're going to need a data template selector because as we discuss that's what we'll do here we'll have this will be for a normal product line this one will be for a freight item Data template selectors. Let's uh, let's remember how they work. I'm going to add a data template selector down here. All right, so we're going to add a new item. Actually, I should probably add um, a cell first, shouldn't we? What do you think? Okay, so in our page, at the moment, here we have a data template. So this is our product data template. So there's a few different ways that we can do this. Um, just sort of in terms of we can have all of this XAML here in the page. We can have them as separate classes. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I normally start off just putting them in the page and then move them out a little bit later on. All right. So why don't we do this? Why don't we add this data template? Why don't we grab this whole data template? And 
and then we'll put it up in our resource dictionary. Here's our data template. We need to give this a name. Key, I think it is. So this will be like our product item. Okay, has all of its stuff in there. Beautiful. Um, and then we also want uh, a data template for Oh yeah, you can do that. You can totally do that. Like a chump, Lachlan. Well, you've got lightsabers. So let's have this as a... Uh, Ah, uh, see, you should be, you should be over in, uh, PC world product item template. Let's call that freight item template. <laughs> you can, there we go. <laughs> what a roller coaster. <laughs> All right, so um, in this one, what do we want? We want we want it kind of similar to the other one. I'm gonna do this with uh, with a bit of reload actually. So let's just do this. Let's put grid label text equals freight item for the moment. And then we can do the data binding. Hopefully that'll work with the uh, hot refresh. Okay, so then what we need is a data template selector. Um, let's have a look at the docs on data template selectors because who can even remember? Data template selector Xamarin forms. What was that? My fiance got me this mouse because I always complain about how much I have to scroll at my job. Ooh, look at this mouse. Actually, that's a good question. Anyone get any uh, any awesome presents for Christmas? <laughs> that's not a mouse. This is a mouse. I know, it's crazy. Mine has a... Um, Mine has something similar on my button here. I've got a button here, which will take it between sort of frictionless scroll or clicky scroll. But that looks super cool. Data template selectors. Something, something. Data templates. Yep. We need a class, beautiful. Okay, cool. That's right, I was just trying to remember how to do it. How to by Randall Munro. Yeah, the XKCD guy. That's cool. That's a good gift, Lachlan. I like that one. The dragon, you're saying that uh, every one of your buttons can be reassigned depending on which application you're running. That sounds super confusing. My brain would explode. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's, um, so we've got our data templates here, let's create a com data template selector. 
Okay, so I need to create a class for this. So let's call this something like our um, shopping cart data template selector. Examine forms. Let's create a constructor. Let's have a look at what we need. We need a property from memory. We need a property for each of the data templates. Yep. We'll have a freight item. Beautiful. And then we will say something like, uh, if the item is product, no, we don't shopping cart item, return product item, else return a freight item. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Dragon, you redeemed a thing saying you've got uh, so many space bugs. Yeah. So the, uh, oh, it turns out I've got infinity space bugs. So one of the things I have to do this year um, and I'm going to do it as I move to my new house is actually update this stream a little bit, work out a reason to have space bucks. Um, so some people are suggesting that, you know, you could redeem space bucks for things like changing the theme in visual studio or changing the font, um, or requesting things. So I need to think of ideas for that. I need to also get, um, subscriber emotes and things like that as well. And actually just do a bit of a refresh of the whole stream. So anyway, anyway, that's for, that's for the new year, but, um, nice to see you using space box dragon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think that's about right. That's our data template. So now what we want to do is we want to come back to our shopping cart popover and Can you buy consultation sessions where you update a UI in one of my apps? That would be awesome, but I'm not sure that you get enough space bucks. <laughs> Maybe you can like suggest a gratuitous animation. Oh God. So, uh, I'm just having a look at your, your comment there, Dragon. Yeah, the guy works for Netflix. I know the guy. He's creating an integration that allows people in chat to change his keyboard layout while he's using Vim, because Vim's not hard enough already. That would be, uh, that would be ridiculous. It's like a mini game. Let's add a namespace here. There we go. That's what I'm after, a data template selector. I'll give this a key. Uh, 
set our so this is where we set i'm just having a look at the docks for this so we say our freight item uh that's going to use in our case our freight item template the product item it's going to be a product item template and then we should be able to use this guy once uh, Visual Studio sorts itself out. It literally smells like burnt chocolate and failure. Come on, Visual Studio. How long have we been using Xamarin? Um... That's a good question. I'm going to guess... Damn. Close to 10 years? Is that right? Probably. A long way before Xamarin Forms. Does anyone remember when Xamarin Forms was released? So quite a while, K uh, KDEX. But it still doesn't stop Visual Studio from... Still doesn't stop uh, Visual Studio from crashing. <laughs> Let's give it a while, because uh, I've... Are you doing, um, are you doing any Xamarin work, KDEX? Xamarin 3, yeah. So basically when I started off, um, we were using Monotouch. Um, that's dead, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> just as I said that, it came back. Um, so there was, uh, there was, a, what's it called? Monotouch, um, iOS and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, it was back in the days where everything was basically native. Just in C sharp. I mean, I can't remember what I did, what I ate for breakfast yesterday. So, okay. Now let's put an item template in here. Uh, so we got our template selector, so I should be able to say item template. I tend to get pretty frustrated with the native app development experience, so I'm much more into PWAs. Yeah, so KDEX, are you a um like a Microsoft y developer? Are you like C sharp and uh, and that sort of stuff, or are you more like a web person because that's going to be an interesting thing with like PWAs and uh, you know and blazer and uh, all that sort of stuff coming up Okay, so we're gonna uh, item template. So this is gonna be static resource. What do we call it? <laughs> so KDEX. I'm more like a Linux person. I like to be as far away from CSharp.net as possible. But I do like to take a peek at what the dark side has to offer. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. 
I gave up, um, you know, sort of like, uh, wars on operating systems and development tools and things long ago. I say each to their own. Okay. Um, so I haven't really been thinking here as I've been doing this, but I think if this builds, it'll probably work. I've got a card item selector. So hopefully it should render the same way, but there should be um, some rendering for the shopping cart. Okay, cool. Okay, so I got a freight item here, right? Which is, remember, as that's what we said as a template. We've got these other two here. Okay, cool. So now what I need to do is I need to come in style a freight item. Okay, so instead of doing this, let's uh, let's steal some stuff from our grid here. From our product grid. And we don't need as many columns. We need that one there. We then need... Okay. So let's have a look at what our freight one is going to look like. It's basically going to be... Um, a grid. Three columns. stack layout going down the page in the middle one icon there beautiful I guess that's going to be one ten all right so in our first column we're going to stick a box view in here And I'm going to steal a few colors here. Uh, actually, let's let's grab that color. So Dragon says, is the horizontal bar going to be part of the data template or is it going to be after the entire list? That's a good question. Oh my goodness. James Montemagno's here. <laughs> no worries, James. How are you doing? Welcome. Uh, Matt, how are you doing? How did, how was your stream, uh, James? I know, I know you've got to get going. How did, um, or anyone else, what were you working on? Seven hour marathon. Oh my goodness. Tell me all about it. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. I love, uh, I love a bit of marathon coding. I noticed you've been doing a lot of streaming recently, James. That's good. I need to get back into it. This is my first stream back uh, since since New Year's. So uh, a little bit rusty. All right. But what we're doing is we're doing a shopping cart here. Um, so we basically... Uh, Happy New Year, James. Exactly. And Happy New Year to everyone who joined in as well. So appreciate it very much. <laughs> it's only been like two days, but it's felt like forever. All right, takes care, James. Have a great weekend. Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing a shopping cart, all right? Um, but if we have a look at the design for the shopping cart, uh, this is basically the design. So we've got uh, a couple of products in here. 
this is just to put a bit of context on what we're doing. Got a couple of products here. And we also have an item, which is a freight item, right? So it's not technically something that the user has added into their shopping cart, but it is inside the collection view. So it is inside the scrollable section. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. So we're just designing this at the moment. Uh, Dragon asked a question, and I hadn't even noticed it. So there's, there's a little line here. Um, there's a little line here, which is showing, I don't know what. So the question is, where is this line? Is this line inside of the freight one or is it inside the main part of the page? It's a good question. So what program is, um, is this that we're looking at here? This is uh, Adobe XD. Yeah, so the Adobe XD, so, you know, it's just nice for, for doing designs. Um, Do you know what I reckon it is? Yeah, I can I can see that. It's got two colors, right? It's definitely uh definitely got two sections to it. Oh, you know what I reckon it's a progress of? If I if I was this designer, <laughs> which I'm not, how about this is the progress to getting your free distribution? So they've got 12 plus 57, so they're almost at 80. But they didn't get it, so they got 15. What do you reckon? I, I reckon that's probably what it is. Hey, Chicken Wing. Thanks for the follow. Very much appreciate it. Everyone's sort of gathered in the corner over here. Let me let me move everyone across. All right. Yep. So absolutely, uh, Dragon. I hadn't even noticed that. So in that case, yeah, I think it should definitely be be uh, part of part of this data template. So this is going to then look like this. It's going to have two. Two rows. Sorry, yeah, two rows, three columns. That makes sense. Okay, so let's add a row definition in. Let's make the height of this one uh, auto. Let's just make both of them auto actually. Even though auto height rows are the devil. Right, so we've got a box here. Uh, let's have a look at how big we made this one. Yeah, something like that. I've got planes flying over me. I hope it's not um, firefighting planes. Australia is basically burning at the moment. What disappeared? Ah, oh, there are actions you can do with them. Yeah, you can fight people, you can jump, you can dance. Um, you can make him fart. That's true. I think if you type command, commands, maybe. There we are. There's a list of commands. So the second one that came out there. I'm just I'm just playing around with it, see, <laughs> seeing if it's any good or not. It's probably just really distracting. So you can change your color. Um, there's some mini games you can play. You can do stuff. The other thing you can do as well is I think you can. Uh, 
I think it can also uh, in the in the Twitch page there's a section where you can actually go and customize these as well. Anyway, let's uh, let's just see if I can get this done first of all. So I got a box view there. Uh, that's fair enough. Attack the chicken wing. Sounds like a good idea. Just gonna have a look at the design. Where's my design? All right, so I'm gonna do a, um, a vertical stack layout. So I'll say orientation of vertical in grid row one. And then we'll put some it's out of the way. Put a label in here with some text equal to come on, where's the design? Where's the design? Delivery. Another label where it says <laughs> free distribution for more than eighty dollars. Right. So this wants to be on good column one. Okay, beautiful. Gonna need some uh, some styling on these. And we're going to need a little bit of padding, I think. That's supposed to line up with the next one. So actually we should, that's what we'll do. We'll get the same columns, it's column spacing. And then we'll put this into column two. Oh, I We don't need that. We don't need that. That there. Oh, is that right aligned? Ew. Let's adjust those margins. Delivery for star. Yeah, column one. Um, I don't know if we want to do cold span two because in our second column, that's where we're going to be showing the total. So let's have a look at where we have our price in this one. Yeah, right. Fair enough, where I had the extra column. All right, cool. So if we were to put this, 
I hate how much, how little screen real estate we have here. So this is going to be in grid row column two. Oh, this is a train wreck, isn't it? So this is going to be the freight cost. Right, what do we call that? Freight charge. Look at what I'm doing here. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Great charge. All right, cool. So we get a freight charge of 15 there. Now, is that because we don't have enough? Let's try it. Let's add. Let's get. Oh. What on earth is that? Android fast render as label renderer. Doesn't seem like the kind of thing I should be getting errors on. Nasty, nasty chicken wings. All right, let's try this again. Add enough stuff to go over 80. Right. Oh, it's already ported. Oh, fantastic, Lachlan. Yeah, Hot Reload does have a few temper tantrums. All right, cool. So there we are. This is working. This needs to be a smaller font. That's for sure. Okay, let's make that a little bit smaller. Let's also make it. Bill Ashton, Happy New Year. Welcome. Hope you had a good one. That's not right. Let's get a color here. All right, um, Bill Ashton says, did you get a good response to our Mac Catalina question? Well, it's a good question, actually. Let's have a look at Twitter. I put a poll out. I haven't changed it yet, but hang on. So there we are, 70... 197 votes. Should I upgrade to Catalina? Uh, 72 says, yep, everything's awesome. 27, everything's broken. Then Lachlan, who is here, maybe you want to clarify this, Lachlan. Don't upgrade before an important event. It's entirely relying on 32-bit apps. So the the so I guess the uh, the simple answer, Bill, was. Um, I'm not sure I got a great answer on it. Um, but I think given that I managed to clear off all that uh, 
cleared off all that space on my old machine. I think I'm just going to leave it for a while. <laughs> Lachlan says, I did the upgrade and lived to regret it, but I still voted yes. Is that because you wanted me to feel your pain too, Lachlan? Probably is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess that probably with Xamarin, it's it's probably going to be fine. It's going to be all the other utilities and things that I use, which is going to, uh, going to create problems. All right, that looks all right. Ah, uh, Lachlan, your audio editing is 32 bit. Okay, so that looks about correct. Um, if I was to get rid of... Fast render. Wow. Big as that labor render again. Epic fail. Yeah, I don't use a lot else in the Mac. Fix for the label renderer. Really? So what's this doing? This is getting rid of the, creating a new constructor. Yeah, okay. That is interesting. Okay, add this renderer. This is good, um, good tips. What else is it doing? Nothing else. Custom label renderer. So presumably this is um, this is going through with a, a fix, right? So this this is already this this is a fix that's already going through, Lachlan, right? So if I put this in, it's just going to be a temporary measure. Let's try it. I'm going to Android project here. And add in a new folder. Custom label renderer and then go and steal your code. Lachlan, does Lachlan have it? Cool. All right, so that should be all I need, right? Renderer, yeah. It's basically getting the label renderer. <laughs> Using the new one. Sometimes things don't work. Wow. 
that is this on request permissions Good context. Yeah. There's namespaces. No reforms label. Android render a custom label window. Context. This should be right, shouldn't it? actual error yeah that's what I'm about to have a look at uh, sometimes things don't work content doesn't appear oh okay so I need to basically what is it like Android what's its name Android dot Are they going to do it for me? <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see. So I'm missing the usings in here. content so just do permissions it's an android can we just do this like that Does that work That'll work. So, uh, oh yes, it has an Android PM permissions. It's ambiguous. Just do permission. Yeah. You know, um, actually, it kind of annoys me. Uh, Xamarin Forms, when you file new up a project, it does call it like, like icelandmoss.android, right? It should totally call it .droid. That'll make it so much better. Oh, it's a trademarking thing. Stupid lawyers. Stupid lawyers. All right. Oh, we're not going into here. That's not what we're doing. We're going to here. All right. So that's got to come across a bit. Total is that. 28 plus 36. 
They are too. Um, 79, so let's add another one in. Yeah, now we get zero, beautiful. Okay, so that calculation's working. Now, what else do we want to do? Um, let's move that across a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. Yeah, right indent for that, I agree. I totally agree. Let's uh, let's find this thing here. In fact, I'm not even sure. Grid row two. I could just add a margin. Left, top, right, bottom. Now that fixes that problem. Chicken wings. <laughs> it's not the droid you're looking for. Um, chicken wings says, need a little space under the shopping cart header, me thinks. Me thinks you're right. Me thinks you're right. Oh, look at that. What a disaster. Let's add that in before we forget about it. Where's our, where is our collection view? Here's our shopping cart, text color white, mind you in a resource. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's set a bit of a margin down the bottom of this alternatively what might be a little bit nicer is what happens if we gave this a height Zoinks. There we are. That added a little bit more there. So I, instead, I just sort of basically gave this this first row here a fixed height. Also, delivery goes at the bottom of the list. Freight. Shipping, transport. Okay, so it goes at the bottom of the list. So... Let's cheat. Let's cheat. Let's make it always go at the bottom of the list. Now, when you add something in, here's my theory, right? When you go and add something into your shopping cart, let's go and add it. Zero. Can we do that? Can we specify the position? Does anyone know? I'm just thinking we, because the freight always exists in there, perhaps what we can do is we can, um, we can basically just go and insert, oh, I think it's insert. Yeah, insert. Items.insert at position zero. Yeah, so it always goes to the start. Card item. I think it'll work. Also, you may fake a list. Yeah. I thought about faking a list. Because we want it to appear here. <laughs> I 
All right. That's the worst worst uh, shop ever. It just cost you 15 bucks for delivering nothing. <laughs> Chicken wings. What are we selling? What are we selling? We're, we're selling Icelandic moss. <laughs> All right. So the original design had this thing here. So I, I bet you didn't even know this was a thing. Right? I didn't know this was a thing. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's more like fluff or lint. Hey, Lorikey. Thanks for the follow. And welcome. So there's a thing called, look, if you go to Amazon, not in Australia, we don't do this sort of silliness, but um, reindeer moss, maybe. Yeah, so reindeer moss is a thing. And you can get it in all sorts of colors. So there, so there you go. I don't, I don't think you smoke it. I think you, um, I think you put it in pot plants. I don't, I don't really know. I don't pretend to know. I don't even really want to know. <laughs> yeah, it just gets, it just gets like the more you search this, the weirder it gets. <laughs> anyway, all right. <clears throat> now, what on earth are we doing? What on earth are we doing? Irish moss. Wasn't it that disgusting drink? No, we're not going here. We don't want this. Okay, we need a little delivery truck. God. What's the delivery truck look like? seaweed okay let's not worry about that one for the moment we could what do you think should I draw the can you smoke that? Should I draw the truck? Things are getting weird in the chat. So how would I, um, how would I draw it? Well, see, this is interesting, right? Because this is a, a specific icon, right? So I'd reach out to the designer and I'd get it, basically. It's how I would normally roll. We could just recreate it here really quickly. And then either export it as an SVG or just a PNG and just use it. Yeah, let's just let's just quickly recreate it. <laughs> Programmer art is best art. That is exactly right. Exactly. We are not we're not qualified as developers. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's what happens. Like when when a des when a developer tries to to do a designer thing. Um, uh, Yeah, Matt, you told me, you said, don't do designs. We can't do designs. And my whole uh, stream crashed. You were totally right. All right, cool. All right, so there's my truck. Now. Um, the question is, what should we do with this truck? What should we do with it? There's my truck. Um, group all this stuff together. And let's turn it into a truck. Hmm. <laughs> Matt's on to me. Typical programmer thoughts. I did art. Now what? Yeah, I done I done art. What do I do with it now? Well, I'll tell you what I do with it. I come in here and I realize that I really need to get rid of this space around the wheel. I realize I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to do this instead. Well, Adobe XD export it to an SVG. It will. It will. Like that's not what I want to do. Why is that? What the? Yeah, that's better. Um, watch the developer do art. <laughs> Come on, it's not that bad, is it? Maybe it is. I totally drive this truck. <laughs> oh dear. What? You're up to the pub. Yeah, that's what I should do. I agree. Cheerio. See you later, Lachlan. I'll catch up with you soon, sir. <laughs> All right, here's me. Here's my, here's my truck. Here's my truck. All the designers have died. All right. <clears throat> now the question is, SVG or not SVG? I know the right answer. Can I make the path corners round? Of course I can. Have you not seen my skills, Matt? Oh, look at that.
Okay. Tell me you're not impressed. Actually, except that one. <laughs> exactly. Are you not entertained? What do you want from me? I don't know why not that one. All right. What time is it? It's one o'clock for me. You know what I'm going to do? This is make me a bad person. I'm going to export this as a PNG. Yeah. Dragon. <laughs> really? Really? This one? You know, this is, this is like the designer version of like trying to find that bug for hours. Look at it. It's off by one pixel. What if I move this side down a bit? Well, I think the problem is that I haven't done anything to uh, to boundaries. But look, it's good now. You wouldn't even know. You can't tap it by a pixel because it's actually like percentages of pixels. Oh no. There's something that undid it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna uh That's alright, Dragon. It it would have annoyed me too. So, uh let's export this. So this is a cool thing about Adobe XD. Right, is I can go, hey, let's go and export this selected as a PNG or an SVG um, or JPEG. Um, and then I can say, make it an Android or an iOS resource or just a normal design resource as well. Um, and it exports all the different versions. I love this. So I'm so awesome. That is the best part of XD. So I'm gonna change this folder to be basically Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Hey CBO eighty nine. Welcome. I've I've been not coding for so long I forgot what drive my github sits on <laughs> thanks cbo89 okay uh what are we doing we're going to export the ios so I'm going to select ios and I'm going to select the resources directory boom and then say export them all and then I'll do the same thing for android But just basically take it up a directory. And export. Booyah. And so now I can come into here. And 
inside my Android project, I should now have, I've got my hidden files turned on. Chuck. More truck, all the trucks. Of course, I was running. Include all the trucks and then go to my iOS and then include all the iOS trucks. Where's my iOS trucks? Hey, did we just get a follow? Today we're gonna code lots. The Amosa. Thank you for the follow. Where do my trucks go? Where's my trucks? There we are. Trucks. Okay. So, given that we have that now, we should be able to add a truck in. Bravo! And then I've got to work out what else I have to do with this. I think I, for this design, um, there's a couple of other things to, to be done here. Like there's a bit of general styling, but it's mostly there. Have to test it on iOS. We've got that bit working. That's all good. Actually, we have to do the add to cart from here. Even though it's a really weird workflow. Because normally you wouldn't sort of tap add to cart and then go straight to the cart. And normally you wouldn't go like, you know, add things in, add to cart and then navigate there. So we might, we might change that a little bit. But anyway, if I go to my cart here. The other thing I hate is um, is when it's designed on a big iPhone and then you're looking at Android and then it looks a bit naff. Oh well. Let's go to our shopping cart. Let's add in our truck that we went through all the pain of creating. That's our product template. We're using a data template selector for this. So I should be able to come in here. Should be able to say, let's go and add in an image truck. Of course, it's going to be white, isn't it? <laughs> There's a truck. We got a truck. Doot, doot. That looks all right. Maybe dissing my truck earlier on. All right. Um, now, one thing we should do, you wouldn't even know a developer did it. Or maybe, maybe, yeah. I'm not much of a developer, so that's all right. You totally would, by the way. Like, I'm pretty sure a designer would come along here and they'd look at this thing. And they're like, what's going on with that space here between this window and this? They totally trash it. Anyway. Uh, 
Ah. Okay. Uh, dragon. If your your items to the cart that makes the freight zero, then remove it. Does the freight cost update? Well, I don't think it. I don't think it should be removed, right? Like I think if you come back here and you add other stuff in. Hey, that totally didn't work. Cannot access a disposed object. Lachlan's change, he said he'd fix that. Something wacky going on. So, so what's the, what's the scenario here? So Dragon says, so like they add six items that go over 80 bucks. Let's do that. Yep. So we come in here, 72 bucks, we know it. Add one more. Bug. Goes over 80, goes to zero. <laughs> and then I take one away. Should go back to 15. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I think it's going to work. What is that? What is this hot reloading doing? So I don't want about 15. So the problem, the you know what the problem is? Um, the problem is that we can't individually add items in at the moment. We can only, we can't change the number of items. So we're just adding them. So why don't we do this? Why don't we make it? Why don't we quickly implement this so that when I come in here and change this value, yeah, just just weird positioning. That's right. So Tim says, from a business perspective, it's better to delete only one item. X in the shopping cart. Yeah. Matt, Matt is, Matt is totally onto it here. This is the issue with some of the cool designs. They're not really the most practical. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm actually getting a, an app designed by a designer at the moment and I'm just picking holes in it all over the place. Um, but yeah, like, like for example, here's, here's the one that I mentioned before, which is a big problem with this one, which is like, you come through here, you tap an item. Cool. So it goes up here. Boom, boom, boom. You go into an item here. You say, Hey, I want three of these. Cool. Then you hit add to cart. And then it goes straight to the checkout. That doesn't make sense. And that's why I tied it up to this one here. Yeah, that's dumb. But you know, like the purpose of my Friday streams is, is really just to try and get UIs done. You know, to, so uh, UI challenges. Yeah, the card should be next to the heart. Exactly. Don't think, just do. Exactly. All right. Um, now, here's one, here's one problem that we have, actually, that I just noticed. Is when we've got nothing in our cart... That should be zero, but it's always, always, always showing one because we actually have the delivery item in our cart. So I'm going to add something into our shopping cart view model. Dragon, you're off for the night. See you next time. Absolutely. I'm going to try and, uh, and get this one done. So next week we can work on a different design. 
It's getting, I'm, yeah, I'm getting sick of this one. So Matt, you worked, I once worked with a website with a designer. He was good, just wasted weeks with background colors and font sizes. Yeah. You know, I had a, I, I had an argument once with a, with a, a business owner, right? That he was like freaking out because if I had like a W and an I, right? This was, this was the, this was the argument. The argument was that these don't line up exactly, right? So like, this is a few pixels to the left of there. And he thought the eye should line up with there. And so we had an argument about this. And I'm like, dude, it's the way fonts work. He's like, make a change. I'm like, oh man. That was a terrible day. All right, um, let's do this. Let's have an item count. Which sounds really stupid, but let's just do it. All right, so I have an item count here. When I... When I add an item in... Well, maybe it should... Do I have an item count? Nah. observable object yeah it's good stuff is there a nice link way i was saying just return the ones of a particular type Of type T. So if I could do this, right, I could say, what I want to do is I want to basically say, I want to get a count of, let's see, what I want to do is I want to do like that, of type. <laughs> no hacking the stream, man. So basically what I want to do here is I want to say... doing so items of type the type going to be it's going to be a shopping cart item dot 
Claro. Come on. Turns out I'm a, I'm a worse developer than... Uh, And I am a de designer. Wow. There's probably no need for a setter on that bad boy, is there? Shopping cart view. So. That means in my main page, this should, instead of going to shopping cart items count, it's going to go to item count. Oh, that's my data trigger. Okay. Then you're going to do with the curly, get away with the curly braces. Oh, like something like that. Beautiful. This is like, um, every stream is like a C sharp learning session for me. Get rid of that too. So Matt, did you get any good presents for Christmas? Hey, look, I don't have a one. But I also don't have. A value when I go in there because when I add a nice model car, beautiful. Chicken wing, one and a Commodore 64 Maxi. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Little gadgets. I love little gadgets. All right. So clearly what's happening here is basically I need to raise a property change, don't I? should I do that? Or make the thing bind to items and use a value converter. Damn. Yeah, I could do that. But then why would I bother? No, it doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Can I just do this? What is worse, a code with events or a new class?
I just do this. I do this. I do have an observable collection. That's why my life is hard. That's why my life is destroyed. Okay. Um, can I just do something like Raise property changed. Shouldn't that be part of? Because this is all I want to do, right? I want to just say. What's the base type of the collection? Base type of the collection. It's an I my list of cart items and it's observable object using a good old friend James's observable object can we just do that I mean technically this would work right we just said Yeesh. yeah on property change is a thing and then I go So long. What's it called? Something, something like that. Maybe. That worked. Yep, that worked. All right, now the question is as well. Oh, sorry, you don't get to see that working. Yeah, that was a zero, goes to one, get rid of it. It disappears again. So the trigger picks it up, which is cool. Um, I, need to, I need to fix that in a moment. But I'm, first of all, I'm going to have to go, I think. What time is it? It's 1.30. What is that? All right. And then I think also we're going to have to have a... Uh, Another thing, which is your card is empty here, right? So there's no point showing delivery in here. We'll just say card is empty. All right, cool. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to sign off for the day. So um, take care, everyone. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, thanks for all of the awesome C-sharp tips for today as well. So, um, Matt, thank you. And uh, Dragon, I think Dragon's gone already. Uh, Chicken Wings, welcome and uh, thanks. 
So yeah, I mentioned Dragon. Uh, oh, y'all. Thanks so much. Listen, why don't we... Um, we should raid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look and see... Um, no worries, Chicken Wings. Before I booked him through that portal. Happy New Year. Thanks, Tim. Uh, so... Do you want to go and check out so we've got a couple of options here we can either go and have a look at some music uh with etc kit we can have a look at laboratory 24 which is uh, all about robots which is pretty cool cm griffin who does uh react and angular and stuff like that anyone want to go and raid any of those what do you think no it's themos Demosa, sorry. Let's just pick one, eh? Let's go and... Uh, it's bedtime, Matt. Well, thanks a lot, Matt. Take care. Let's go and raid Laboratory 24. 4.40 a.m. is a little bit late. That is true. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, okay, everyone. Thanks for joining. Seven viewers, 11 viewers. Let's go say hi to um, Laboratory 424. And uh, till next time, cheerio.